Hey all, this is Corey Anderson with Why Try. I'm excited to be here today. I'm here to deliver you some tips and tricks for online instruction. We know with everything going on in the world right now, a lot of you have resorted and actually been asked to move to an online delivery system for instruction, at least for uh, a certain period of time. It might even be the rest of the school year. And we wanted to give you some tips and tricks that you can use um, to deliver online instruction, not only with just uh, uh, why try content, but you could actually take these tips and tricks and use them with whatever other instruction you need to deliver. But we will also talk about specifically how to take our why try online virtual lessons and implement them um, in this delivery system. So with that in mind, I am going to share my screen and we are going to get started. Uh, here we go. Share. And bam. So why try tips and tricks to online delivery? Uh, during this, uh, this webinar, I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to use the phrase virtual live and self paced. So virtual live means that you're, you're delivering online instruction in a virtual setting, meaning over the internet with your students, but it's live, right? They are on their computers, uh, at the exact same time that you are delivering the instruction and, and you are interacting back and forth with them at, uh, in, in that setting. So that's what we call a virtual live. A self-paced setting would be a setting where you put the components of your lesson on some type of platform that your probably your district or organization has provided. And then your students are asked to log in and access those components, whether it's a video that you've created or assignments or something like that, right? So that would be considered self-paced. You create the instruction materials, you provide it for them, and then they are expected to go and do it themselves um, in a certain time frame. So one's virtual live, one's self-paced, and we will deliver tips and tricks that apply to both. So I know that online delivery is scary, right? For a lot of people with, with, uh, COVID-19 coming down, uh, you've been asked to change your job, but you never thought you were going to have to do this. And so it's, it's scary, right? Because you've never had experience. You're unsure what to do. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're trying to help you. But at the end of the day, they, they, I'm sure that, you know, it's, it's, they're you've given resource, you've been given resources and then they've said, okay, now go and do right. But sure. You, you, you feel uncertainty in doing that. I, I, I'm positive. Um, and then it doesn't feel like good teaching, right? Like, uh, or good interaction. If, if you're a service provider, it just doesn't seem the same as when you're in a live setting with someone. Uh, and then, you know, there's just this need for human personal interaction. So it makes this online delivery system scary to do. We recognize that. Uh, but think about this. Okay. Uh, and I know it's scary, but, but bear with me and think about a couple things. First of all, youth are used to learning online. Even if they're not in some sort of formal learning setting, they get online every day, multiple times, and they are learning things. They are soaking in information. And so for them, getting online and taking in information is nothing new. It may be new for you to deliver it that way, but in terms of receiving that information, they do it all the time. And so the second point of that being, think about the fact that they're very comfortable navigating online. This is going to feel natural to them. And whereas it, it definitely won't be the same experience of school and going to school every day, it will be natural to get online and use different systems to access it. So if you're worried about that component and, oh, what are my students going to do? They're not going to know what to do. They will catch on really quick. They're probably, they're more advanced than me. They're probably more advanced than you. Um, so they'll be okay. Uh, and you know what? Honestly, think about this. You may capture students you've never, you've never captured before, right? You might have some students in your class that have a difficult time turning in homework or really engaging in the lesson. And if suddenly they get to be in a different setting and get online and on a platform they're very comfortable with, you might actually get their attention more than you've ever got it before. You might actually get some assignments turned in that you've never had turned in before. Um, if you think about it, you send homework home in some sort of paper document and they have to write their answers or something like that and bring it back. 
uh, there's a lot of moving parts to that. Whereas if they can get online, engage with your lesson and then submit it electronically, just type a few things out, that might be a lot easier for them and might capture some students you never had before. Um, also, I think one of the most important things is that you're actually being forced to develop some skills that could be very useful in your future practice. So obviously at one point we're going to be going back to schools and, and we will normalize and, and, and things will move closer to what they used to be. But man, you could use some great skills to integrate into your, your everyday teaching practice where you're still delivering some components online for kids at home if you want. You know, maybe, maybe delivering some homework assignments or different things like that or instructional videos. It's just, I think you have a great opportunity here to embrace this idea of, you know what, this is a moment for me to tech, or catch up on technology. And with the school, with a normal school year moving like light years super fast, now you have a chance to take a breath and kind of kind of learn some of these things that you've always wanted to know, but it's like, when do I have the time? I've got a million other things on my plate and this kind of goes down on the priority list. So take advantage of this, uh, of this time in, in your career to be able to develop some of those skills. And then last but not least, um, you know, you can still develop a teacher student relationship online. It is possible. And we know how important relationship is. In the Why Try um, approach, we talk about relationship as one of the three R's, right? One of the fundamental principles of teaching social emotional learning. So it might think, well, how do you develop a relationship on online instruction? And granted, I agree with you. It's, it's, it's not as easy and it doesn't feel as natural and maybe it's not as strong. But the youth you're working with, they have a lot of online relationships. They're used to it. Through, through all of the different apps and programs, that is their, one of their principal methods of developing relationships and interacting with other people, especially their peers. It is very possible for you to develop a relationship with them in a teacher-student uh, capacity. Through your videos, they will engage in those videos a lot. If you, if you create videos as a part of your instruction, they'll love it, right? They, they will see you in a new light. And, uh, and so don't discount the possibility of, of still nurturing and developing that relationship. So hopefully you think about those things and that moves you past some of the scary that comes with suddenly having to deliver your instruction online. So let me first talk about the steps you should take toward online de delivery of any curriculum. So this includes not just why try, but, but any content you have to deliver. If you're a classroom teacher or if you're a service provider and you have other things you're responsible for that you need to do online, Here's some things to think about in preparation for that. First, take stock of what programs you're working with, right? Like I, I'm fairly positive that every single one of you has been asked by your organization to deliver online and they've probably come to you and said, okay, so we have Canvas or we want you to use Google Classroom or we want you to do live videos via Zoom or we're going to get everybody a go-to meeting account or you know, I'm sure there's plenty that we could list out of different ways that people engage online. And, and, and your district may have a specific platform that they want to use and they want you to use and, and maybe they're providing you training on it. Um, but you wanna flush that program out, right? You want to, after you figure out what programs you have, that second bullet point, you need to practice with those programs you use. Get on, practice recording video with it, practice uploading assignments to it, um, or creating quizzes or anything like that, because most of those programs are going to have that type of component to it. And depending on which one it is, uh, you could have a lot of tools at your disposal or maybe even just the bare minimum. But even with the bare minimum, you're still going to be, to be able to do a lot. So it's just a matter of getting comfortable with it and practicing with it. And then once you've practiced with it, you should be able to start delivering more and more via online, right? Um, look for resources to help you out. We're trying to provide you resources here at YTRI. We've developed those 10 online virtual lessons that you can use for those who are using our curriculum. And we have these tips and tricks uh, webinar and other webinars that are released. We do Facebook Live um, uh, messages uh, every day at one o'clock Mountain Standard Time to also give you some, some, just some ongoing input and ideas to implement. 
Also, look for the technical personnel in your organization. Reach out to them, they can help you. And you know what, maybe you have family members or friends that are tech savvy that can help you with all of this as well. Uh, just some ideas. Look for the resources that you have around you. And then last but not least, when you do this, I also encourage you to find some music to incorporate as a part of your learning experience, right? If you're delivering an online training, a virtual live training, I would have music playing as your kids are logging on, right? As, as just kind of an intro. And so you can still make it fun. You can still make it engaging. You can still find tips and tricks and strategies to draw in your students and, and develop that relationship and create an atmosphere with them. Uh, so those are some ideas. Those are some steps to take towards your online delivery of any curriculum. Now, I specifically want to move to helping you with the Y Tri curriculum. Everything I've said up till now, you know, is probably good practice to use with any content. But now specific with Y Tri online virtual lessons, I want to talk to you about them and give you some ideas of how to implement different parts of those. So. With that in mind, you need to understand that a part of every virtual online lesson, you're going to have several components. One of those components is the attention getter question, then the metaphors, you have the activities and the videos, and then the journal prompts and the journal activities. All of those are components of a, of a virtual Why Try lesson. And for each one of those, I want to break them down and talk about some things you need to keep in mind, some tips and tricks whether you're doing it in the virtual live um, method or if you're doing self-paced, right? So let's start with attention getter questions. Every single one of the Why Try virtual lessons has an attention getter question. And the idea of that is just something for the students to immediately engage in, think about. A lot of them have something to do with the metaphor you're teaching. Um, and obviously the kids don't know that going in, but that's, that's fine. And so if you're doing a virtual live, give the students time to think about the question you've put up there and then you have the students respond and you can have them respond by either raising their hands some of the programs will actually have a thing have have a component where the kids can press a button and it shows that their hand is raised because they want to give feedback or you can just say hey as soon as you have your answer throw your answer up in the chat window maybe even you guys have gone super high tech and all of your kids are set up to be able to respond uh, uh, through audio or maybe even visually and, and if you have that at your disposal, that's fantastic. Most of you, I imagine, will do it via a chat window. Um, but give them a chance to respond into the chat window. Um, if you're doing this self-paced, I would encourage you to just have the students think of that, qu that question, answer it for themselves, and then share that with someone in their family or even someone you know, that they're there with if, if, they're, if anybody's around them. Um, I wouldn't make them too accountable for that question. It's more just an attention getter. Uh, they'll be, you'll want to hold them accountable for some other things later on in, in the lessons. So that's, that's what you're going to want to do with the attention getter questions. Next, I want to talk about the metaphor walkthroughs. So with the metaphor walkthroughs, this is a little bit more um, complicated. So with the visual virtual live, make sure you follow the script. The script is going to be your best friend, right? And as you go through the script, you're going to either want to use a PowerPoint or at the very least, put up one slide that shows the metaphor. So with the PowerPoint, you can of course click through and have different parts of the metaphor come up. That is one of our basic online um, curriculum tools that we have uh, that you could use. Or if you just wanna put up a PDF of the metaphor, you could do that as well. But the point is, is that you're gonna get a, a visual of that metaphor up there, and then you're going to go through the metaphor and talk about it and ask questions as you go along. And all of that is embedded in the script of the virtual lessons. And then as you ask those questions, have students respond by raising their hands, typing their answer, audio, video, just like I talked with the attention getter questions. Um, you'll you'll want to feel out what's comfortable for you and, and you as a teacher, and, and that's fine. But you definitely want to interact. You'll notice my bottom bullet point on that virtual live. You want to find every moment that you can to interact with your students and feed off the information that they're giving you. And maybe, you'll notice my fourth bullet point, maybe with some of the questions as a part of that script and that 
that metaphor walkthrough, you'll actually want to turn into an assignment and maybe you will, you'll pose the questions in your video, but then you could make it a separate assignment that you make the kids accountable for to show whether they were actually listening and engaging, uh, if they understood it, that sort of thing. So you could create an assignment that goes up on the platform that they are required to turn in and you would get that back, right? Uh, now, if this is self-paced, obviously you're not going to be able to have that interaction, right? They're not there live. You're not asking them questions and they're not chatting with you uh, while you're going through the met metaphor. So you need to get uh, comfortable in videotaping yourself. Uh, and that can be done via, right now I'm doing this via Zoom, right? I'm recording this as I talk to you about the slides. And you could do the same thing. You can put up the PowerPoint or you can show the visual metaphor and you can videotape, you can record yourself going through and explaining the metaphor. Now, as you follow that script and questions come, obviously you can't just pose the questions and get an answer. So our recommendation for that is that you need to model both the teacher and the student roles, which means when the questions come in the script, you're gonna state the question and then you're gonna say the answer. So for example, in the reality ride, one of the questions that we ask students are, what are some of the challenges that kids your age face at home and at school and with your friends? So let me ask you, what are some of the challenges kids your age face at home? I imagine some of the challenges you face are, and then you could answer the question as if you were a student, right? And, and that way you're modeling that and helping them cognitively go through the metaphor and they will be thinking their own answers to the questions as you go through it. So that, that is a great way for them. You can create that video that then they are required to watch. And then once again, I would suggest you take several key questions that are a part of that metaphor and create an assignment that they are responsible for answering and submitting to show kind of proof that they went through the metaphor and actually did the video. That way you can hold them accountable for the lesson. I also, more than with the virtual live, if you're going to do self-paced, I would use examples and stories as you go through the metaphors and try to, try to point out either real life examples and stories or, or even um, scenarios, right? And, and that will help paint the picture better for the kids in, in contrast to being able to, to interact with them in a, a live setting. Make sense? Okay, so that's the metaphor walkthrough. Um, we also have an activity as a part of every lesson. And that activity, uh, on a virtual live, the script, we have written the script uh, with this in mind so that you can deliver it. So if you follow the script, you should be good to go with the activity. I don't really have any additional tips and tricks other than you do want to make the choice. Do you want to process the activity as a group or once again, make it an assignment. And you could make some combination of both, where you take some of the questions to process the activity and do it virtually right there in the live setting. And you can take some of those questions and make it an assignment. But the most important thing is take advantage of being there in the moment with the kids and engage with them on those, on those activities that we've embedded in the lesson. With the self-paced, um, once again, you're gonna follow the script, but you're going to make the processing questions as you videotape yourself doing the activity, you're going to make the processing questions an assignment in the platform your organization is using. So if it's a Google Classroom or Canvas or something like that, you upload an assignment that's called, you know, the reality ride uh, learning activity and then the processing questions that they're expected to, to go through it, right? And that will show proof that they've gone through that portion of your lesson. Videos, as a part of every lesson, we have a video that we have uh, put up there. It, most of them uh, link to YouTube. Uh, I believe one is a Facebook, but regardless, you can use those videos, those video links as a part of your lesson. And if you do that, make sure, first of all, that you test the video out before going live, right? Nothing's worse than being in a live setting and then being fumbling through things. So practice using that video. And maybe that means you're embedding the video within a PowerPoint, the PowerPoint that you have, or if you need to flip between you know, one window and the next, make sure you've practiced that transition and you can bring up that video pretty easily for the kids to be able to watch. And then, and also practice it to make sure the audio works. That's important. Then you're gonna use the processing questions to engage with the students in the moment. 
um, about that video. You need to know as a part of every video, we also have a check-in question. And that could definitely be used as a separate assignment, even if you're doing it virtual live. The check-in question is designed to just give the kids an opportunity to give you feedback of just how they're doing, how they're feeling, right? They're, they're used to having lots of human interaction. And now that they are being forced to practice social distancing, then it's important for them to have a moment to check in with you as one of their trusted adults in their life. And then in the self-paced model, you need to decide, do I want to make the video a part of my metaphor walkthrough, or is it going to be a standalone video that I ask the kids to watch separately? And then once again, you're going to make those processing questions an assignment to be handed in. Okay, journal entries. So journal entries are very, very important. This is going to be where kids reflect on the lesson that they've been given and the lesson components. And then they're going to uh, be able to kind of assess whether or not they understood it or engage in it a little bit deeper. So if you're doing this virtual live, uh, for each lesson we have provided two to four journal entry activities. Obviously, you may only have them do one. You may have them do four. Or you may actually create this into two separate lessons where one of them you come back and talk about um, the first journal entry that they did with everybody and then you give them a second journal entry. There's a couple different things you could do with it. But the bottom line is, is that when you do the journal entries, they are intended to be self-paced assignments that the student does to demonstrate their understanding or enhance the experience. So if you're doing a virtual live a method of instruction with the students, then I would suggest that you explain in that virtual live setting the actual journal prompt and then make them responsible for completing it in a, as a self-paced component, right? So you would present the journal prompt and say, I want everybody to do this journal prompt and this is what it's asking you to do. Uh, this is what you know you need to do. And then um, once this ends, I expect you to have that done and turned into me by you know, the end of the week or next Monday or the next time that we meet or anything like that. Uh, and so then it becomes kind of like their homework assignment that they can do. Now, if it's self-paced, uh, the journal entries are, are, since they're designed to be self-paced anyway, then it's very natural. The only difference is, is that in your video walkthrough, I would definitely take a moment to share with them which video or uh, which journal entry prompt that you want them to complete. Maybe, you know, give them a little recorded instruction, but then the same thing, you know, you say, okay, I want you to do uh, this journal prompt that's that I've uploaded for you. And, uh, you know, I want this turned in by such and such date. And there you go. Um, and so with that, those are all of the components of the lessons of the virtual of the why try virtual lessons i really hope that's helpful my email is cory at whytry.org that is cory at whytry.org c-o-r-y i would love to answer any questions that you have if you come across anything that you're troubleshooting and you're not quite understanding feel free to reach out to me i hope this has been helpful you guys are awesome i uh i admire you for the work that you're doing and being so flexible in this crazy environment. Um, good luck. Thank you.